Okay. So we've kind of done a uh, sort of a big budget. Another, another number, this is not going to be on the exam, but just something to keep in mind is that right now, and since we're looking at kind of these relatively large numbers, right now in the state of Montana alone, there are 150 million dry tons of standing timber. And that's just standing. That, that, those are, you know, the zombie trees, the beetle kill that are there, and the, the Forest Service, I think, is starting to figure it out and said, hey, let's not spend the $2 billion on the uh, fire panic season. Let's spend, you know, a portion of that on, on fire mitigation ahead of time. So, you know, cut, you know, cut the, cut the brake lines, pull the slash out, et cetera, et cetera, and use the wood, you know, use it for something. I mean, even, you guys maybe saw that, that dam that was uh, risk of collapse. And so one, one thing, we won't do it here, but one thing I do want to do is like calculate how much energy is being wasted in the spillway. You know, it's like, ooh, someone should put a, you know, paddle wheel on that bad boy and get some juice out of it. But, uh, yeah. Which yeah. dam are you guys talking about? I think it's the tallest dam in California. Oroville. Oroville. Oh, yeah. Oroville. Yeah. Oroville. Yeah. Oroville. It's the tallest dam in the nation. Yeah, my tallest family nation. in Redding, they're telling me about that. The Sacramento River is so flooded. Yeah. It's really so you, you look at that, you're like, man, so feast or famine, like, wh why, why don't we do a better job managing that valuable resource? You know, put, put the dam there in the first place. And the same, you can make the same argument for the forests that go up in a puff of smoke. You know, why, why aren't we doing a better job managing that as a resource rather than a liability? Yeah, there but, are your jobs right there. Yeah. I, I heard some pretty good news, though. It sounds, sounds like Montana timber is going back to work. And I, I do have a really nice relationship with... Uh, Dave Atkins, as well as Julie uh, Keys, who are, who are National Forest Service uh, employees, and like want to see a turnaround too. And and kind of the, you know the what what another hope that I have, you know, in this current administration, the fact that Ryan Zinke was just appointed to Secretary of the Interior. I mean, for better or worse, I'm like, okay, so the Forest Service sits under the USDA. USDA sits under the Interior. So the Interior might say, hey. Let's put those foresters back to work, go get that wood and make some biofuels, guys. So that's kind of the, the hope in this current administration. In fact, Zinke was very much in support of the algae aquaculture technology outfit up in Whitefish. And uh, Mike Holacek, who was the, um, one of the leading scientists behind that operation, is one of my current business partners. So we, we, we feel like we've got a reasonably good path to, you know, Zinke and, and, and folks like that who are like, <clears throat> let's do the right thing for the forest and for Montana. So. Did he oppose the public land? The public lands thing? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't follow the public lands. I mean, if he said he did, but then he's voted against sort of like what you expect. Yeah. 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 I, I, There's been a big, like, um, Well, they were talking about mining pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> but but I mean, but really, I mean, the, the things we're talking about here with with use of bioenergy that was going to go to waste, it's very relevant. Yeah. It's very it's very relevant. Okay, so until recent times, history of human energy was essentially the history of bioenergy. Um, there, there's even some talk, I don't think it's mentioned in this textbook though, but the Romans being constrained to bioenergy sort of blew through their budget. You know, they were, they were always out looking for, you know, new, new crops, new wood to build chariots with, boats, etc., and they just kind of blew the bioenergy budget and that's why they collapsed. So. Some evidence of coal burning as early as 3,000 years ago, uh, relatively small until 1800. And that's kind of right as the Industrial Revolution is, is kicking off, right? And so you've got the coal to make coke, to make steel, to run the steam engines, et cetera, et cetera. Most of that is uh, external combustion engines. If you remember from 101, the Savory steam engine, the one that was pumping so, you know, kind of funny, you know, perpetual motion machine, bootstrapping, you know, burn the coal to pump the water out, to, to bring up the coal, to burn the coal, to pump the water out. So that, that's where that is with, with um, uh, external combustion. So in 
So another thing, if you've read, I've, I've, I know I've mentioned Amory Lovins a few times. He points out that the uh, fossil fuel industry inadvertently saved a lot of whales from going extinct because we found, uh, you know, these these oils underground rather than floating around with brains attached to them in the ocean. Uh, let's see, tallow for candle, et cetera, et cetera, grass, right. Um, so the move from bioenergy to fossil fuel is a key fu feature of the Industrial Revolution. Um, you know. Another thing that came out of this, and I, I ran into this recently too, we were, we were out in, on Wall Street sort of pitching some ideas. Um, there was an investment group there that was essentially burned by a, you know, financially burned, not literally burned, financially burned by an outfit in Indiana that was going to take um, post-consumer waste plastics and use it to, um, use it as a, as a coking alternative. Because as mentioned here, in order to make steel, it's got to be hot. And to do that, you need just almost pure carbon. And that's what this, this guy is. And, and they kind of discern, well, it might work for a little bit. But there's just not enough plastic in the world to make steel at the rate that we, we need to. So um, anyway, had a little. It's changing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when all those single-use plastics are really Yeah. Oh, and here's that perpetual motion machine I, I mentioned, you know, using coal to pump the water out, to pump the coal up. Uh, OK. There we go, there's your 10%, there's your fourth largest. Uh, some numbers are mentioned. The vast majority of that 10% is just heating energy, right? People burning wood. I think heating and cooking, yeah, the vast, yeah. vast majority is heating and cooking, very, not, not so much uh, for electricity. Yeah, no, 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 no. All right, well, there, here's the, um, Here's the, the simple version of that photosynthesis. You've got um, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, water that's you know, you know coming from the, the ground or whatever, but it's on it's sitting there in the plant. Here comes the photon, and at the end there's a lot of other steps involved, obviously. But out comes your sugar. That's what uh, C6H12O6 is. It's uh, more or less glucose and some oxygen as the waste product and around we around we go with uh, with metabolism okay and I mentioned previously you know we just, and we just saw the molecular symbol for glucose there it is once once this um, polymerizes so that's what this little n means there it's just it's just c6 h10 o5 on and on forever in the same way you would polymerize ethylene to make polyethylene and plastics. That's really all that, that starch is. Cellulose, larger, more complex, and you know, capable of supporting an entire tree along with hemicellulose. Lignin, that's the hard, that's the hard stuff. Lipids, those are the, the you, know, you might call them fats, but you know, the lipids are the actual cell membranes, so cells themselves have to maintain an electrochemical gradient to stay alive. And then of course proteins, you know, pro proteins are the, the tubulins and all the molecular machine, you know, the photosystem one itself that we just saw is a protein. Do any plants have uh, anemic acid components or compounds in there? Do plants have anemic acid? Amino acids? Amino. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, all 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 plants have amino acids. Absolutely. Yeah. Amino amino acids are um, sort of the, the third the third leg of the central dogma of biology, which is uh, DNA, RNA, protein. So yeah, if you, if you're alive, you've got amino acids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and then again, so there are subcategory of proteins called enzymes. You know, those those are the ones that are doing the work. So. Some proteins, like you know, say collagen itself, is structural, not an enzyme, just just structural. The enzyme is is um, enabling reactions to happen uh, faster than they otherwise would. 
Okay. Um, hydrocarbons does not necessarily have to be just carbon and hydrogen. You might have a, um, an oxygen in there as well, but we just think of most of these things since they're primarily carbon and hydrogen as being hydrocarbons. Now this, this number is not quantified, but the glucose molecule contains more chemical energy, right? So it sort of sits at the top of the pyramid once that's been burned. The CO2, the CO2 doesn't have chemical energy anymore. To, to split that, you have to put some kind of energy in. That was the light energy that we saw. So this is a cycle, you know, it's a, it, it, it's a cycle. And there it is. There's the plant doing its thing, the animal doing its thing. Why does it say CO2 to the air for? Because it says CO2 from the plant? From the animal. Where? Um, no, I'm looking at the tree. Yeah. It says CO CO2 from the air, and oh. then it says CO2 to the air. Why doesn't it say oxygen? Yeah, yeah. it is a typo. Is that a typo in the next one? Yeah. I mean, well, when it... Oh, it does. It is a typo. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Yeah. It's just like, uh, and I know, and I know I exactly... I was on CO2 the whole time. I'm like... Well, <laughs> you know? It's not doing anything. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's so bizarre. Well, I know exactly that happened because somebody just copied and pasted and forgot to get rid of the C. But yeah, <laughs> that, that is a typo. This this is... That's that's O2. That, that's a... C, nope. <laughs> there we go. Nice yeah. work. Good eye. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like there's little extra boxes. That yeah, so it's like a little cut. Like, yeah. yeah like well, I, th I think they should have done a little better job with their, um, you know, oxygen being white and CO2 being brown. The, the color coding could have been a little better, too. They're saying, like, in and out. Yeah. 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 This one was a little hurry. Doing, mm -hmm. Getting their book out. All right, so the, the yield, uh, and this is, this is just basically mass, so, you know, metric tons per hectare. Hectare is, what, 100 meters by 100 meters uh, for energy. Uh, so, and then the, the yields can be vastly different, 15 gigajoules up to, up to 400 per hectare per year, depending on the crop. And then let's just, we'll just end on this one little box, because um, Tyler, you were asking about this earlier. And then that, that little deal you showed at MIT with the artificial leaf being more efficient, here's, here's kind of what happens. Um, only about a half a percent of the solar energy that hits the plant becomes chemical energy. So, yeah, but uh, it's good enough, right? I mean, it's life, life's been doing it for a long time. So um, a lot of the, the light just doesn't hit the leaf. You know, it's the stem, it's the trunk, it does, does, does something else. It's mostly the addition of heat that provides the plant the photosynthetic capabilities. Not so much. I don't, I don't know. I mean, there, there's certainly a, I mean, you can't do this super cold or super hot. I, and I wouldn't say it, it's heat that drives it, but... Um, there's a Goldilocks zone there for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, as we know, sun spectrum is large. Only half of it's usable to begin with. Um, might some of it might hit a uh, leaf, but maybe the leaf's not doing anything. Right? There's dead. So there's 85 percent. Uh, 21 percent gets turned into the chemical energy. So you you might think of this as the efficiency of photosystem one. I mean that's sort of the fundamental efficiency. Because not, not every photon that hits the leaf hits that photosystem one. Some of it's kind of used on site, you know, by the plant or lost, and then the rest is stored. All right. You can kind of think of this as the, the fat, right? So you eat your lunch, some of it goes away right away to get you across campus, but the rest is, you know, kind of stays as part of you. Has it, has it been proven that uh, with the addition of specific 